The way so none of our stuff is patented, right? Because when you patent something, you got to put it out there on display for everybody to see, and then uh, a big company gets to come along and knock you off by changing one little thing. So we went the Coca Cola route. Ours is a trade secret. Um, you obviously you know that there is potassium silicon in it. That's one of the the base products that we use to make it. Um, so I forgot the question. Why? <laughs> You know, so, I think so, you have ADHD. <laughs> you might be right. Oh, Full man. circle. You might be right. Uh, so if I was going out there with a two-gallon rate, oh, you yeah, would yeah, tell yeah. me Constant, this, yes, so on and so forth. Okay, so I, kn- I knew there was a reason for that. So um, because of that, the way that I started building products was I've commercialized scientific data, peer-reviewed research, because and now I'm going to take a step back. You have to understand how the universities are set up, right? The reason that everybody thinks everything is snake oil or foo-foo juice or pixie dust is because the universities are obsessed with statistical significance. we got to hit you know, p-value of less than 0.05. We've got to be 95% sure right, that it has to work 95 times out of 100. That's great, except that that's totally not applicable in agriculture. Like yep. Nothing is going to yep. work 95 times out of 100. You are it's never going to be weather. 95% certain that, that what you're doing is... Just the weather destroys that opportunity. Exactly, study. exactly right so so when the way i look at it is if you ever find a study and by the way none of these are published in the united states they're all overseas because better more progressive research comes from overseas sorry for whoever i just pissed off but that's the truth so i read a lot of stuff from india from egypt from israel from iran from china from indonesia like everywhere that is not here right brazil wherever and when you find things that the university who is inherently biased in saying none of this crap works when they say well guess what amino acids work on wheat like that study i was talking about you damn well better pay attention to it, right? Because there is something exactly. there. So what I do is I've got a massive library. I mean, just a tremendously massive library, and I've spent a ton of money accessing articles, buying books, trying to figure out what we can isolate, like which amino acids on these crops work in this time. And then I'll say, oh, my first principle is always like, do no harm. So if I get you know mixed results where it's like, this amino acid does it, like I said on the, on the wheat thing with the cysteine or cysteine, if I have evidence that it works, but I have other evidence that says I'm going to increase fusarium head blight, guess what? I don't, yep. I don't care about the one that said that it works because it's not worth it. My, my first principle is do no harm and it's not worth the risk. That one's out, right? So as I'm building products, I'm just going through and finding what works. And then there's like an art with the science as well, which is you got to figure out what things are compatible, what things are not compatible, what things may have other mechanisms or modes of action that could be synergistic that like that just requires a little intuition or, or more of a background in you know chemistry or whatever else. And I'll run stuff by my chemist or by our microbiologist and get their input and stuff. But like it, it's about figuring out what works, you know, and, and how it works. So because of that, now I finally get to answer your question. Yep. Because what of that. What was the question? I, I say I remember this time. It's why is it concentration based, like in grams per oh, gallon? Oh, yeah. sure. Because all of this data, all these studies are concentration based. It's in millimolar concentration. It's in parts per million. It's in whatever. So I'm just going based on what the science says. Because a lot of times they don't tell you, oh, we did it at five gallons per acre. And it's always in you know, liters per hectare or whatever, grams yep. per kilogram. But they won't tell you how many they put on. They tell you it was at this concentration. So I was like, well, that's what we're going to start with. Because if a judge... Court per acre. Ever, it, no, not a court per acre. No, that's what we're told. Yeah, 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 exactly. Court per acre. We're just pulled and a court per acre. I swear, I'll have to go back and find it. But I swear to you that I think even the original Roundup research was concentration based. If I remember this right, I'll have to see if I can find it. Because I think I've got this. Now that you say that. Do you I, remember think that I think I've came across that. I'm, I mean, hundred percent. But here's what happens, though. Then the co-ops and the big ag companies they bastardize that because they're like, "Yeah, most guys are going to run ten gallons an acre, so that's the right we're going to put it at," which is fine for the guys running ten gallons an acre. Yep. But the guy that's wanting to run twenty just ran a half rate of what he was supposed to run. Yep. Gee, I wonder why we have weed resistance. Yep. Wait. Uh huh. Same amount of product went on the acre, though. Yeah, it did. But it was diluted. But it was diluted. Is the theory there? Now okay, compl- so I had a friend who who ran, I'm not going to say how he applied Roundup last year, but he ran it with like a half a gallon of water. Hmm. Hmm. And he that's, smoked, that's like, smoked what he was going after. <laughs> of course, that's not on label, but interesting. I, didn't, <laughs> I, dude, I said I had a friend. <laughs> yeah. I had a friend. He is not in this room. That's That's good. He's not in this room. I'm lying. I'm dying. <laughs> so, so that's my no, story. Wait, <laughs> you just no, wait. Josh, I'm Josh trying Dan. to help you, Josh. I know. <laughs> if you want to help me, stop for a second. <laughs> um. Okay, diluted down. So, okay, so we're we're running. Uh, uh, her just for a second. Just take a second to help the farmer here. Uh huh. We're we're so we're okay. Coverage is key. Mm-hmm. Is what we're preached. And now, now there's probably herbicides where coverage is key, mm-hmm. like you know, droplet li- size. Yeah, matters. Li- like Liberty comes to mind. They say uh-huh. you can cover every point of the plant. Mm-hmm. 
but then we run Roundup with it, and Roundup then kill grass now. Mm -hmm. What's the question? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll say a point like this. I don't just know. Because, he just wrecked my head again, Just man. because, you know, I was, I, oh. I, I've read some research from a certain seed corn company when it came, can I, and I have spray drones. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and it was, it was clear on the research that they provided that drones had a better action with the fungicide than like a spray rig and the only I've thing they could come research. and with that research though they're saying because of the concentration uh-huh okay i'm just saying that was based on their studies yep i'm not going to sit here and say that my drone's that much better than a ground rig i'm sure. not going to say that but on the same token the argument was concentration mm -hmm. i'll just leave it at that so i mean that's what so again the whole answer to your question is i built them that way originally because that's what, it's a cover your butt policy, right? Yeah. I want to be able to say, look, like I didn't just cook this up. And guys, when I built stuff, probably the, the greatest value that we have as a company that, 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 that Alchemy Bioscience has is may not even be the products that I've got, but it's the tool that I have created to build products. Like yeah. we've actually built a spreadsheet with all kinds of different, you know, vitamins, amino acids, so, you know, you name it, we've got it in there. And I use it as my database to then like start putting stuff together. But I force myself to say, okay, I have a research tab and I have to put, I make myself put the research citation in with the rates. And then I have to reference it on my front tab, which is like, when, when I put this in here, this, this substance at this rate, why? And then I reference it to the study so that got I can you. always, yep. I can always say, Hey, look, man, like, I'm not saying we'd have no liability in that, but like there's scientific evidence for every single thing that we do. Now, with that said, Pixie Dust Plus, I'm super excited about this because this year, finally, I feel like we have enough data where we are taking that to a grams per acre rate, which farmers are going to awesome. love so much more. Yes. But we had to get... I got no, three, I'm not. Why? Because I just messed everything up for you? How? how grams. Oh, like we, we'll convert to ounces in a second. That, oh, that's okay. Easy. We're good. <laughs> All right, it's, we're good. It's here, one jar does 100 acres. Period. Oh, that's that is easier. beautiful. Yeah. There you Isn't go, that okay? beautiful? Say, <laughs> dog but dirty. But here's, but here's dog dirty, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what we had to have to get there, okay? So I had Bex did our stuff. We're PFR proven at 10 gallons an acre at that 1.8 grams per gallon. So that's 18 grams an acre. We had um, Ryan Robinson, who we work with out in Indiana, ran it at three, four, and six gallons an acre. So you've got to have, like, the, they call it, like, the dose response curve, the dose-dependent response curve, yep. right? So at three, he got a response. At four, he got a better response. And at six, he got it, like, exponentially better, like, ROI on this. And we factored in product costs on this other yep. stuff. So I've got three, four, six, and ten. Well, Josh Messer, who works with uh, Ag Intel, does yeah. some consulting yep. for us. He did it at uh, 5, 10, and 15 this year. So, like, when I put all of these data points together, what I see is we go from diminishing returns, actually, from uh, uh, 10 to 15. And I was okay. like, well, I know there's a lot of guys, you know, spraying Liberty at 15 or even 20. But when I look at all of this data that we've now put together personally, laid out, I can say in good conscience and with good uh, uh, evidence, no, we, we need to be at 10 gallons an acre. Because at 10 gallons an acre, 10 gallon acre rate, I should say, or 18 grams. Yep. Because at 18 grams an acre, that's where we maximize ROI. Okay. But I'm, and you're like, well, why haven't you done that on Pixie Dust yet? Okay, sure. When, if you guys want to volunteer and do that research with us, that'd be great. Because I would love to get to that point. Because everybody would rather have one jar that does 100 acres rather than one jar gets dissolved in 1,000 gallons, which exactly. is what it used to be. Yep. So, yep. But that's my, I guess my research process is we start with what I can support scientifically, and then we'll update and modify based on what we can support scientifically. So just on that, you came up with your number so if i would go there with a drone mm -hmm. um and do a two gallon rate would you still feel comfortable at the 18 i think so because okay. the way actually i had a drone pilot ask me this earlier this year they said what's the ma part of that's gonna be max solubility and it's oh, okay and, fair enough and that's fair in my enough. spreadsheet right yeah. so like at what fair. point do we over concentrate it yeah and, and yeah, I, dude, my spreadsheet will tell me that dude, okay. i can tell you though max constant max solubility is not max dude no some no. that takes sometimes a tremendous amount of work Usually yep. half yep. of what is max solubility is reality. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. Wow. That seemed fairly profound. I know. I, I hope you clip that and save that one. That's a good one. Kurt, notate. <laughs> <laughs> Do right. I, I can forget about it now. <laughs> Where are we? Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.